Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, the HER2 amplification and breast cancer. Okay, so, so far what we have seen is that in response to um, the growth factor binding to the HER2 receptor, which is specifically epidermal growth factor, what's going to happen is you're going to activate PI3 kinase um, and PIP free uh, phosphoinositide free kinase is then going to add a phosphate group onto the structure of PIP2 to convert it into PIP3. Okay, so now what's going to happen is that PIP3, which I from now on will just denote as a box um, because it's easier than drawing its um, structure out. Okay, well, I haven't actually drawn its structure out. I've drawn a cartoon, uh, a nice cartoon, though, of uh, its structure. So, okay, here's our PIP3 molecule in the phospholipid bi there. Okay, and basically what's going to happen is that certain enzymes are now going to come and bind to PIP3. Okay, now one of these enzymes is an enzyme known as phosphoinositide-dependent kinase. Okay, so this enzyme is phosphoinositide dependent kinase and for short it's written as PDK1 so in full this is phosphoinositide inositide dependent kinase 1 dependent and then I should go down here kinase 1 okay right so uh, let me give it a colour. We'll have it in purple. Uh, so phosphoinositide dependent kinase 1 is going to be recruited to the phospholipid bi there when uh, PIP3 appears there. So it will bind to PIP3 and then it will be localised at the cell membrane. And also, when it binds to this phosphoinositide, this PIP3, then uh, it will become active. So when it's active, it's an active kinase enzyme and it's going to add phosphate groups onto other proteins. Now, another protein is going to localize at the phospholipid bi there as well by binding to PIP3 molecules again, okay? And this other protein is a protein known as AKT, or more commonly maybe now referred to as protein kinase B. So this is obviously now an important enzyme because, you know, we, we know protein kinase A, we know protein kinase C, we know protein kinase G. These are all very high up in signaling pathways. So, um, well, in the signaling pathway world. So this is protein kinase B, so it must be pretty important. Um, but its old name was A. KT, and that name is still quite pervasive, uh, among, certainly among the research literature. People will generally write AKT and then put PKB in brackets for protein kinase B. So um, you'll see usually, most reasonable people will put both names uh, to please both worlds. Okay, right. Now, AKT also binds to this phosphatidylinositol 3,4,5-trisphosphate molecules and therefore localizes at the cell membrane of the cell. However, it itself is not activated by PIP3. It just localizes there. However, the phosphoinositide-dependent kinase 1 is activated by uh, binding to that PIP3. And it now is an active kinase enzyme, and it's going to put a phosphate group onto the protein kinase B enzyme, like so. So it sticks a phosphate group onto protein kinase B, and now protein kinase B, or AKT, is active. So now the protein kinase B has become active by being phosphorylated, basically, by um, this... Um, well, by this phosphoinositide-dependent kinase 1 enzyme. Okay, so that's so far where we have got to in the PI3 kinase AKT uh, mTOR path... Excuse me. mTOR pathway. We've got to AKT becoming active, and AKT is now going to carry the message on. Okay, right. So before we can go any further, before we can see uh, what the effects of AKT are going to be, I think we need to first discuss 
uh, mTOR, basically, the next target in this, because protein kinase B's job in this world is now going to be to activate mTOR. But in order for us to understand this, we need to understand a bit about mTOR, because mTOR doesn't just go around on its own. It goes around with a massive, great complex of proteins, known as the mTOR complex 1. Okay, and it has another complex that's very famous as well, called the mTOR complex 2, which isn't uh, relevant for this pathway, but is um, nevertheless important in molecular biology. Okay, so firstly, let's just talk about mTOR protein in its, on its own. So it is a protein, and its name stands for the mechanistic target of rapamycin, although everyone still refers to it as the mammalian target of rapamycin. But officially, its name is the mechanistic target of rapamycin, but mammalian target of rapamycin, whatever you want to call it. Mechanistic slash mammalian target of rapamycin. Okay, so again, they took the M from mammalian or mechanistic, T from target, O from of, and then rapamycin. Rapamycin is a drug that, again, has been renamed since this protein was named. It's been now renamed Cyrillimus, and it's a powerful uh, immunosuppressant. Okay, uh, so... Um, mTOR protein no longer goes, well, doesn't go around on its own, basically. It goes around in a huge, great complex known as the mTOR complex 1. So the mechanistic target of rapamycin complex 1, which is denoted mTOR1. So this is equal to the mTOR for mechanistic target of rapamycin complex 1. Okay, so... If we put mTOR at the centre, then, here, of this complex, then we have a bunch of other proteins which are all uh, bound here as well. So, uh, up here, we'll have the protein Araptor, okay, uh, which stands for the regulator, uh, regu the, sorry, the regulatory associated protein of mTOR. So, Raptor, where should I put its name? Raptor stands for the regulatory associated protein of mTOR. So, there are a lot of proteins in this mTOR, uh, mTOR 1 complex. So, regulatory associated, associated protein of mTOR. Okay, and that's quite a cool name for a protein. Protein of mTOR. Right, uh, so we'll call this video here and we'll continue our discussion in the next video.